Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sing With Us, uh, we, hosted by Ashna Mittal. Uh, we, I thought I would start off the session. Uh, my name's Alex. I'm from the Music Performance Unit, um, and we're presenting this event as part of Diversity Fest, which is running this week at UNSW. Um, there are lots of other events happening as part of Diversity Fest, but uh, tonight you have joined us for learning about Indian classical music. So before we get started, um, a little bit of housekeeping. You all seem to um, have your microphones off, which is great. But if you do want to ask um, Ashna a question, do feel free to turn her microphone off and say hello, or you can just type it in the chat if you would like. Um, and there'll be time at the end of the session to ask any questions that do come up for you. Um, Ashna is an alumna of UNSW. She graduated from the School of Art, Design and Architecture, and she's also a trained Indian classical vocalist. So we're very lucky to have her uh, with us this evening. And um, do you're welcome to turn your cameras on as well, but we are recording this session. So if you don't uh, want to be a part of the recording, you're welcome to leave your camera off. But if you do want to turn your camera on, it is great uh, for Ashna to see all of your faces. Um, and I think I will hand over now to you, Ashna. Thank you, Alex. And thank you so much, everyone, for you know, joining today. Uh, happy to see the faces. It's, you know, weird timings, everyone connecting virtually, but still, you know, it's good. It's good we are connecting, you know, people from all over the world, we can be able to connect to, you know, families, friends, virtually at least. And uh, yeah, so today we are going to talk about, this is a workshop on Indian classical music and uh, specifically about Hindustani music. And I'll tell more about what's the difference between Indian classical music and Hindustani music. Uh, and uh, trust me, this, this is going to be fully packed session because this going to be so much information pro probably I might overload you guys with some of the things but hopefully hopefully I'll try you know to keep you engaged and if at any point it becomes boring uh, ask me something let's make this interact uh, session interactive and yeah singing or music can can never be boring I think so so uh, a bit of an overview about this presentation would be uh, we'll starting with uh, we'll start with the introduction of what is Indian music or what is Indian classical music, then we'll straight away dive into the basic terminologies and then we'll move towards practicing Alanka. Let's make this interactive. I, I always wanted, you know, like even though we are joining virtually, but we should be able to, you know, practice a uh, practice or, you know, sing along. Uh, you guys can keep your microphones off and still sing along with me while I sing. So uh, I know this would be a very different style of music for most of the people here. So I hope you guys can, you know, follow along the instructions, but if at any point of time, if there are any questions, do feel free to, you know, unmute yourselves or pop it into the chat. Um, next, we'll, uh, I, I know that you guys don't know about Alankas uh, until now, but we'll talk about Alankas in this presentation and how and why it's so important. And uh, we'll move towards the rag, which forms the basis of Indian classical music. And then we'll, uh, you know, very uh, lightly touch on how to sing a piece of rag, although, you know, uh, it comes with years and years of practice. And uh, I was just telling Alex, like, I never got a chance to even see a rag uh, until, you know, two years of practice with my guru uh, for, you know, uh, five days or six days a week. and to our sessions daily so uh i mean i know it's going to be quite a lot for a lot of people but still you know you'll get some idea you'll be able to identify at the end of this presentation or this workshop you'll be able to identify what's uh what a rag is and how it's sung and uh how it can be made beautiful so uh quickly moving towards the introduction so indian music uh it comes it has its two traditions one is the North Indian, which is Hindustani classical music, and the next is the South Indian or Carnatic classical music. And as the name suggests, these are two different uh, music styles which came out of one Indian music around 15th century, I think so. And uh, they diverged uh, and 
as the name suggests they belong to two different regions of india so one is north indian the one is south indian uh, and uh, the major difference between these two different styles of music is uh, carnatic music it's it's a very strong composition based like very strong compositions however the north indian music has a lot of uh, gives flexibility of you know improvisation so there are a lot of improvisations so uh, and you'll see this uh, in today's session as well like when we come to the rap we we'll, you'll realize there are just four lines uh, you know four lines that a singer sings in a rap but there are so many ways in which that it can be sung so that is what we're going to see and uh, another very common term uh, just because we are talking about you know indian music it's important uh, to know you know uh, when you come across an indian singer they might introduce themselves you know uh, coming from some gharana so gharanas are nothing but they are different schools of music uh, you, so even in north india or south india uh, indian classical music they have got different gharanas uh, so even if there are two gharanas from north india they might be different in the way they sing because you know how different schools have different curriculums so it's just the same thing and they follow a certain uh, curriculum or a certain pattern uh, of singing uh, moving to the next slide uh, so quickly diving into the basic terminology like we have uh, uh, sorry can i just shut this down here yeah. okay. so just how we can uh, have uh, notations in western music do re mi fa sol la ti do uh, we call this swar in indian classical music and uh, we sing it like do re mi fa sol la ti do sa so in indian music we sing like sa ri ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga So, uh, Alex, could you hear that? Yep, it was beautiful. Okay, good. <laughs> so, when we go from you know the mm, from the lower octave sa to higher octave sa, it's called aro. It's ascending. And when we go from uh, top sa to the bottom sa, we have got avro. And uh, yeah, it's the same seven uh, notations: sa re ga ma pa dha ni. and then it's uh, then you know it keeps following the pattern it gets into the next next octave so uh, notations are same it's just we say sing it in a different way so it's sa re ga ma pa dha ni and uh, yeah aro and avro is very important so these are two other terms that i'm uh, introducing aro is ascending order and avro is descending order that means you know coming down then uh just like how we have octaves uh we also uh, we call saptak in indian music and uh, it's the collection of seven sur uh so there's middle octave and yeah one important thing that i need to mention over here is uh indian classical music is uh, sung with on a harmonium and a tabla which so tabla is on the percussions and uh, uh harmonium gives uh, the sound the uh, music to any you know rag or whatever uh, piece of music that we are singing uh and yes if you can see today i'm sitting uh, on the ground so that's one other thing that's very important or one common thing that you'll realize in indian classical music and it's a good practice as well uh that we sit on the ground so uh and with our you know Uh, legs crossed and the reason why it said that we should you know practice always practice music uh uh sitting down in an upright position is because we, uh, our voice comes from our stomach so uh and so it's very like in indian classical music you have to have you we do not uh, like it's not appreciated to sing in falsetto so you have to have an upright position you have to sing with your uh, legs crossed uh on the ground and sing with your stomach you can feel the voice coming from your stomach so uh yeah so that's some of the rules and uh, i until now i have discussed about swar which are the notations then we talked about the octave which is the saptak collection of seven swars um uh, moving next is alankars and uh, alankar alankar it literally means ornamentation so uh i'm not sure if uh if you guys have uh 
you know listened to uh, any piece of indian music or uh, any you know classical music but if you see like the major difference between indian music and the western music is uh, indian music is heavily ornamented uh, and uh, you know there there will be a lot of modulations uh, so even the simplest things say for sariga it can be saying like sariga but mostly that's how we train our you know uh, vocal cords to sing it like sariga ma pa i'm i'm doing a lot of modulations in my throat so that's uh, so it's heavily ornamented and that is what where alankar helps in so there are a lot of ornamentation styles and I, i'll talk about it like some of them um so that what alankar literally does and uh, they are like decided phrases of swaras which were the notations covering the whole saptak so say for an example as you can see on the screen is uh, this alankar which is sa re ga re ga ma ga ma pa ma pa dha pa dha ni dha ni sa so these are phrases so sa re ga re ga ma so these are different phrases and when you sing it in uh, when these all these phrases come together covering the whole saptak and they are sung in a pattern so there has to be a pattern so say for in this uh, alankar uh, can anyone uh, can anyone answer what's the pattern that you guys can see someone some good volunteer who can tell what's the pattern being followed let's make it interactive someone no one sorry what's the question uh so uh can you see my screen so on my screen there's uh this uh alankar that's written uh what's the pattern that you can see is being followed in this entire alankar so the pattern is that the next phrase picks up on the second note of the of the phrase before yes the second tone yes. of the phrase before <laughs> yeah that's correct so uh so say for this alankar it's uh you uh, you keep moving you keep jumping by one note and you keep moving and that's how one phrase varies from the other phrase likewise there are uh, hundreds and thousands and thousands of alankars and like i mentioned alankars are ornamentation styles and when there are thousands so these are more like like in indian classical music i always like in my first year or second year i think so i kept on doing practicing alankars and why it helped was these are more like you know practice questions so e- before you get into you know uh music the main you know the composition you learn the different techniques so uh say for in this alankar it's just you know the pattern is just you are jumping one note it can also be like sa ga re ma ga pa ma tha so here you are jumping you know one note so you are straight going from sa to ga re to ma and you are just jumping one note so it helps you glide over different notes learn that you know get all the sounds of each swar into your head so it helps you learn those transitions glidings and get a proper knowledge you know even when you don't have any supporting instrument right now i'm not having unfortunately uh so when you don't have any instrument you even then you know okay what is the right place of that swar so that is what alankar helps in and even if you are new to you know uh, the best part about alankars is you can pick even if you are a newbie so you can if if you have learned any style of music you can still relate to this and still practice different kinds of alankars and it will really help your you know get a control over your vocal cords do that those transitions and try a few of those transitions or sing some bollywood song if you are interested in that uh, and i did mention there are different ornamentation styles so some of the ornamentation styles that we are seeing here uh, obviously they are not all the ornamentation styles so some of them are like gamak which is called the pulsating effect so say for if i say so i'm singing the same note but i'm pulsating around the same note so i'm going up and down up and down not going to another note it's still 
sa but just you know slightly up sing, singing slightly above and then coming back to the same note so that's pulsating effect that's one style of ornamentation then we have got kan or the grace notes so the kan or the grace notes would be more like so say for you sing sa sa re so here i'm i'm reaching to re going through another note okay sa re i'm going through ga and then coming back to re so that's kan notes so either you can go down and still land on to the same note or go up and still land on to the same note then we have got murki this is one of my favorite ornamentation styles it takes quite a long time to you know practice this learn this but once you get to know this it just looks beautiful in every piece of you know music that you sing and uh, it's it's not unlike grace notes or gamak uh, it's a composition of three four notes and uh, an example of it uh, would be the song that i've been singing recently uh, i'll i'll sing uh, that song and you know just first line kaise keh do ke mujhe cho so here you did you hear that cho i'm singing the same word i and i'm just you know elongating it you know uh and it it still comes in you know the small beat one or two beats and i sing like five six or five six so it tied in you know in a pattern in a composition so it's like a composition of uh five six notes or a a small composition which you can sing you know twirl around and uh add to you know any piece of music and uh, another one on ornament, uh, other ornamentation style would be andolan which is swing pattern so say for ga i'm i'm still singing the same song uh, same note but i'm swinging it ga however so however in gamak or the pulsating effects you say sa can you see the difference can you spot the difference between uh, you know the different ornamentation styles so yeah i know uh, it might be quite a lot for uh, but yeah so these are a few techniques you can you know over time obviously this presentation would be shared i guess this since it's recorded it can be shared as well so as you go back to the session probably you can try a few of these techniques and yeah probably learn to sing some piece of music as well uh and now that we have learned some few things some basic terminology i think so it's time for us to you know practice something let's get our vocal cords uh do some activity and uh, the for uh, so here are a few alankars so um, so the first one uh, there's an aro aro is ascending order avro descending order uh, i'll be singing one alanka twice and the third time that i'll be singing i'll be really uh, hoping that someone you all are actually you all would be singing along with me so yeah i would really appreciate you all joining and if yeah somebody wants to volunteer singing the third time it would be really nice so the first alanka it's very simple it's just one note you go up and down that's it so sa re ga ma pa gha ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa in first alanka what you are trying to practice here is trying to elongate the same note and it's more of a breathing exercise although i'm not doing it right now but so originally if it's supposed to be sung it should be like sa re ga ma pa it's more like a breathing exercise you learn to control your you know breath and you just try to sing as much grab as much air as you can into your lungs and then try you know force it out out of your vocal cords so ha sa re 
Nice to see everyone singing along. <laughs> yeah, I could see everyone singing. That's nice. Uh, so do you no, I think so we can move to the second alankar. It's very simple again. Uh, it's just we are singing one note twice. So sa sa di di ga ga ma ma pa pa dha dha ni ni sa 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 ni ni dha dha pa pa ma ma all good everyone's following along yes good good to see uh anna you can come off mute and yeah just can i just ask how you pronounce the the tone that is dha oh it's the the uh it's it comes from your throat okay uh, it's D H, so the just add a sound of H. The probably uh, you know you can therefore the just add. I know it's gonna be bit, but yeah, if you can if if you can even say the, that's fine. Although it comes from here, the. I know it's yeah, it's just you know. <laughs> uh, Oh, I, I don't think, yeah, it, it it's the way how we speak. So, yeah, uh, it just comes from the throat. But, yeah, if you can s still, you know, say some, something close to, uh, you know, therefore. So, the, the, I think you can just, you know, add a bit of an edge to it and it would come out fine. Uh, then we have uh, a third alankar, which is, Okay, we'll sing along together. Do you guys want me to go slower if if it's fast? Okay, I can go a bit slower. I think so. Okay, everyone, good job. That's third alankar done. That means you have learned three practice. You have cleared three practice tests. The fourth practice test is the arrow is sarigama. So we have added one more so. So in one phrase we have got four notes. Sarigama rigama pa gama pa dha ma pa dha ni pa dha ni sa. Okay, one last time. Very good. Good job, everyone. I can see all the faces. Everyone's going, doing a good job, I suppose. And yeah, I know like, for some, it might be a problem because different scales. So yeah, you can adjust your scale and obviously you can see this recording uh, and when you are singing, you can just take, 
sing it at your own scale but yeah for learning purposes i think it, it gives an idea and yeah uh, at least it helps me that yeah you are you guys are able to follow <laughs> seeing all of your lip syncs uh yeah so this one's gonna be a bit tough because here we have added, you know, a bit of transitions, but it's just to give an, if you are not able to follow it, probably you can revisit the recording. But the idea is to, you know, sort of give an idea like how with each alakar, the complexity uh, increases and it's just, you know, how it helps you uh, get that control over your vocal cords. So uh, the pattern over here is Sarega, Sarega, Sarega Ma. So you go to the third note and then again go back to the first note and sing four, sing until four notes. So that's the kind of pattern that we are following here. I'm sorry. So, sa re ga sa re ga ma, re ga ma re ga ma pa, ga ma pa ga ma pa tha, ma pa tha ma pa tha ni, pa tha ni pa tha ni sa. And so uh, right now we are just, you know, uh, singing this with, you know, some notations like we are using swar. But the ultimate goal is to train your vocal cords and by the end of it, what happens is so your vocal cords learn to do that vibration without you know using any wordings to it so this is how it helps you you know learn get that control obviously you have to you know keep on repeating this like hundred thousands of times but it's a good practice and yeah if you know it might help in whatever music style uh that you choose to sing because it just you know gives that control over your swear or notations and you know the way you sing uh do you uh i think we can move to alankar six i'm not sure what how are we doing with the time but uh, I think we are lagging behind, but still, okay. So let's go to the sixth alankar, which is the sixth practice test. Uh, and it's Sagari Ma. Here we are missing one sur. So instead of singing Sarega, we are missing the Re and we are jumping one note. So Sagari Ma Ga Pa Madha Pani. Sing along. Sa ga re ma ga pa ma dha pa ni dha sa sa dha ni pa dha ma pa ga ma re ga sa. Very good. L lovely to see everyone singing. Ah. Uh, so in this note, like uh, in this alanka particularly, what we learn is those transitions. So we are jumping one note, but how do we connect from, you know, say for sa to ga? Sa ga, that transition. Sa re ga, we are still doing a bit of re, but you know, we are turning it into a transition and landing directly on to ga. Sa ga, sa ma. Likewise, we, we can go jump two notes, we can jump three notes, we can jump four notes. So that's that's how we learn, you know, how to jump notes and still connect from first note and land on the la right notes. So these were alakas. I hope it all makes sense. If any of you have any questions, feel free to ask me right now. And uh, next we, yeah, like I have stressed it quite a lot of times. So why alankas are so, so important, improves vocal ability. It gives that sur knowledge and it helps us, you know, understand those transitions, learn different transitions and yeah, just grab a control over our vocal cords. And uh, just like how we say a doctor, uh, an apple a day keeps doctor away, I would say Alankar practice each day and it will keep your vocal cords in shape. <laughs> I don't know if it made some rhyming, but yeah, something. 
so yeah back to basic terminology uh i did mention about you know swar swar were notations uh then we also have so there are original notes which is sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa but in addition to this we also have got flat notes uh of what we call flat notes in western music they are like komal swar so they are represented represented with horizontal lines underneath the notes so if there's a, a horizontal line underneath any note that's a flat note and uh, or what we call a komal swar and they i mean uh, and also we have got sharp note so only ma is uh, has a sharp note and only re ga dha ni have flat notes sa and pa never have any you know flat notes or sharp notes they are always sung in their original you know sound uh and so since ma is the only tivra note uh how the how we represent tivra notes is with a vertical line above as you can see over here uh so over ma we have a vertical line so that's how it's represented that means it's a sharp note uh and collection so together these make 12 notes and with these 12 notes a person can do wonders if you learn how to you know uh learn those uh, learn those transitions and have a good knowledge of all these 12 notes no one can stop you from singing you know the best of best singers uh so that music is all about you know uh, swar which is you know the sound and tal which is the rhythm uh so yeah in indian music we call the uh, uh we call tal as rhythm uh we call rhythm as tal i'm sorry uh and uh, again yeah it's very important although i haven't covered much about in this presentation since we were restricted of time but yeah obviously you can't sing, sing without rhythm uh now moving towards rags uh ra what are rags so rags are arrangements of notes around one or one of the 10 scales or thirds of which i'll talk about what are thirds in you know uh in a uh, in a way in a composition and uh, each rep uh, rag what's the be uh, what's a characteristic of a rag is like each rag has represents one mood or an emotion so uh, say for uh, the rag that we going to learn today uh, is rag yaman uh, it represents uh, you know an emotion of love and it represents an emotion of you know caring uh, there are some rags which might represent anger some might represent uh, love some might represent so there are different emotions uh, that can be represented in different rags and uh, i talked about thad so each of these rags are based around thads there are 10 major thads and what are what are thads thads are 10 parent scales which are used for classification of ragas and uh, unlike you know western music we how we have scales uh, which are used for composition here in indian classical music they are just used for classification so the 10 thads that we have are these so bilawal kalyan khamaj bhairav kafi marwa bhairvi asavri purvi and thodi but uh and if you can notice uh the only difference like the difference between different thoughts is what composition like what are the rules they are following so say for in bilawal all the notations would be sung in their original sound so all swar are shudd in kalyan there would be ma tibra that means ma would be a sharp note and rest all would be sung in original notes uh say for in khamaj we have got ni komal which is a flat note and rest are all should so for all these 10 thoughts we have you know uh, say for you know guidelines made and these are the classification systems so uh thoughts are just 10 but there are hundreds and millions of rags which are based around the same 10 thoughts although there are many other thoughts and based on different schools of you know music that you study uh some might say there are 72 thoughts or you know uh other numbers but the idea is there are 10 main classification thoughts and every rag comes under any of these one of these 10 thoughts um uh, to give this bit more sense i have attached a video here and uh i i'll sing along with here uh, with this video and it will make sense how you know the sounds of these you know komal swar and uh, you know the 
flat notes and sharp notes different are different mm, why is it playing I don't know why it's not playing. Okay, I think so. I'll quickly. I'll drop this in the chat as well because it's a good uh, resource. It's a good page if you are new to Indian music. I'll drop this in the chat as well. Uh, yeah, and if you guys want to study more, learn more about it, it, it's a good page to, you know, practice. So yeah, let me know if you all can hear this. Yeah. So it was just simple, like it was like all original notes. So in Bilabal, we had all notes as original sounds. So sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa, sa ni da pa ma ga re sa. Now we are listening to Kalyan. In Kalyan, we have got uh, ma ting, which is ma is sharp. Sa re, <coughs> sa re ga ma. It's not sa re ga ma. It's not that. It's sa re ga ma. It's slightly above the, uh, you know, the normal ma sound. Sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga re sa. So ma is not landing. It's slightly above. It's a sharp note of ma. So in uh, Kalyan, we have ma tivr. Then we have got kamaj. That was Asavri. So as you could see, these were all 10 thoughts. The only difference was like in each of the, and if you could sense like the emotion, like how just, you know, flipping through those, you know, uh, the notes, the combination of different, you know, uh, sharp and uh, flat notes, how it gave an emotion to, you know, even these uh, swar. So you had that emotion in even these thoughts and that is how, you know, it's carried forward in different rags as well. Say for the Asavri rag, it's always, you know, like, uh, it's it has a lot of depth, it has a lot of grief and it's very connecting. It's, it's a very strong rag. So a strong thought and it also has a rag. So rag, there's a, uh, Rag Asavri is a third, but it also has uh, Asavri, Rag Asavri. And there are other rags that come under Thart Asavri, which are like uh, Durga, uh, what was it? Um, Darbari, yeah, Darbari comes under Rag Asavri. So there are many rags that come under. So these are just classification systems. Uh, moving next to, so these were thoughts. Obviously, you can practice, but... Uh, obviously this session would be too small to you know cover all things together uh, but yeah we'll quickly move towards you know the last piece we all were you know waiting for which is the rag and today we're going to discuss about you know the rag yaman which is kalyan thart kalyan thart was having ma tibra, that is ma sharp note and remaining all were original sounds okay so all notes would be should and it's one of the starting rags that we study. So because it's just one note that's sharp, 
and all notes are you know in the original sound so this is the rag that we usually start with you know when we start learning indian classical music um tal tal as i mentioned earlier as well it's called rhythm and uh for rag yaman we have got teen tal which is 16 beats so it's a rag which is based around 16 beats likewise we have got eight beats 10 beats uh four beats and there are so many beats that we follow in Indian classical music and different rags are based around different, you know, uh, rhythms. So this one's based around 16 beats, beats which is called Teen Tal. And the singing time. So yeah, that's very important thing. So, uh, you know, how each, uh, as you were listening to the thoughts, you must have noticed each, you know, how their Aru and Abru was, uh, you know, played on a harmonium. It gave... Uh, an emotion at the same time so when there's an emotion it also there also comes a time you know uh, not you wouldn't like to hear say for you know uh, a sad music starting uh, you know at the start of the day right so likewise even for rags we have got certain way in a rag should be sung so say for there for this particular rag the singing time for this rag is early night which is between 6 to 9 p.m so that is what we follow in Indian classical music as well, that we stick by times. So there are certain rags which uh, are sung during that point of time. And since we are falling in this time zone itself, like around six o'clock, so I think so. It's a good time. So this is the time for this rag. And uh, Jati is Sampoon. So uh, I mean, uh, these are like some complex words. Uh, I can try and explain it, but uh, it's just, you know, more or less an introduction and people who have learned Indian classical music, uh, the moment you give this introduction, they'll know, okay, what all the no what all notes are covered. So, Jati literally means, so if you tell someone, you know, like uh, some harmonium or instrument player, you tell them, okay, this is a Sampoon rag, which means all notes are used. So, some rags would have just five notes, which would mean of some would have just you know six note which would which would mean shada so these are like three classification system for you know telling the instrument player okay these it it has all five notes used it has all seven notes used it has got just uh, six notes used so just a way of introducing okay what's what that composition is about and uh, vadi is primary note that's been used so that just you know gives uh the instrumental instrument player uh, an understanding okay the composition has ga as primary note and ni as secondary note so you know these would be the predominant notes so that you know while playing it becomes as soon as you give this introduction they know okay what they're going to play okay so this with any rag you always give that introduction every time uh, next we start with aro like we had so uh, we create a mood for rag uh, it's all about and uh, in ideal you know when uh, when you go for a classical you know show or some you know concert it goes it would be just one rag and being sung for 100 uh, you know being sung for one hour two hours straight four lines straight so you have to set a mood for it and how do you set a mood for it you start with aro, you uh, you come with a bro, and then you give a pakad. Pakad is a uh, more of a hint. It's like a hint what the music is going to be about. And I'll sing how we started. So it's like, <clears throat> uh, yeah. One more thing I I forgot to mention was that uh, here, as you can see, there's a dot beneath me, and there's a dot above some. It, it just is a way of representing. So this is a higher octave sa and this is a lower octave ni. And these are like original, like, uh, mm, I, I think I did mention, yeah, madhya sapta. So these are like from middle octave, this sa. So when we put a dot over any notation, a dot means it's from a higher octave and a dot beneath, it's from a lower octave. So... Uh, yeah, that was the representation style, and now I'll start with Aro. Here, if you would have noticed, Ma is Sha. I think I forgot to sing Ma 
sharp in our o it would be like nire ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa this has started creating a mood building up the mood okay it's all about building up the mood then we give okay this has given okay that's ma is going to be sharp this has set up a mood now we have to give okay a hint a teaser for you know uh what the rag is going to be about and which comes in puckers so it's like ni re ga re sa pa ma ga re sa and this gives you know that it's an entire take away of you know it gives away okay what the rag is going to be about it's going to be you know uh if if it's going to be happy if it's going to be sad if it's going to be you know chilled out it's just an you know introduction uh, it gives you know what's the feeling and what are the notes of that particular rag so uh i think we can all sing along at least we can start building up together so from uh, we'll start with aro we will sing a uh, sing avro and then we'll go towards pakad okay try and follow along with me ni re ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni dha pa ma ga re sa ni re ga re sa pa ma ga re sa three tears for everyone everyone was singing perfect <laughs> to what i could see yeah but good to see everyone singing and you know get along getting along and that was the entire uh, you know concept of uh, today's session uh okay so we talked about building up the mood so that's partially the mood that has been built now comes the chota khayal so chota khayal is slightly bigger than pakad but again it's the idea is to give you know a detailed uh you know introduction to the rag okay that's the rag's going to be you you are just going to give give a bit more detail you know take away okay that is what go, uh, rag is going to this rag is going to be about and uh, it it is also called as sargam geet it's just you know a uh, detailed composition so you have all the swar that comes in a chota khayal uh and it gives you know okay this is a detailed explanation of what's going to be there in the rag and uh, so say, uh, for chota khayal for this rag yaman it's uh, uh, i'll sing i'll first sing and then we going to sing it together okay so ni tha pa ma pa ga ma pa there's a pulsating effect pa pa ma ga re sa re ga re ga ma pa tha pa ma ga re ga re sa ni re ga ma pa tha ni sa re sa ni tha pa ma ga ma ni tha pa ma pa ga ma pa okay so we'll sing it along okay alex I I want you to sing along as well. I am um, is it possible for you to show us with your hands the the direction of the notes because I still can't re- I can't remember the order of them yet. Okay. So ni tha pa ma pa ga ma pa pa ma ga pa ma ga re sa re ga re sa re ga re ga ma pa tha pa ma ga re ga re sa ni re ga ma pa tha ni sa re sa ni tha pa ma ga ma ni tha pa ma pa ga ma pa pa ma ga re does that make sense I'm not good with hands. I've never used it. <laughs> I was just trying to, and this thing I've sung like a hundred and millions of times. That I, it just comes spontaneously. I I don't see the notations anymore. It's just you know, and so yeah, that was. So these are all the swar that are used in this particular rag, and 
I, I know you guys can't try this, but I just want to give, uh, you know, how you can keep practicing and, you know, how you can. So this is some one beat. Like I've tried to sing in, you know, just 16 beats, but now I'm going to try and sing it in just eight beats. Okay. And I'll show how we do it. What I did was, it was a 16 beat. I was singing originally like natural, 16 beats. Now what I did, it's all, all maths. 16 beats, four, four segments in each beat. Okay. What I did, I sang all 16 beats. Then what I did, I increased the tempo and tried fitting what was an eight beats into four beats. Okay. And that's how, you know, music is also, you know, brains. You have to, you know, you have to do a bit of maths. So, uh, yeah. So this is how, you know, you can keep improvising and obviously, uh, as you, you know, keep practicing, you'll, you'll learn it, you know, and probably after you listen this, revisit the session, you know, probably five, six times, uh, you guys would also start singing uh, just like this. <laughs> so, no, I'm kidding. It, it's a lot of practice. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was Chota Khayal. It, it will, it's a detailed, you know, introduction to the, uh, to the uh, Rag Yaman. Okay, now we are still building, okay? So this was just building uh, and an introduction to the rag and the main rag is just these four lines. So this, this, this and this. So this was this, there was so much build up and there are just four lines. But you can keep singing this rag for, you know, one hour, two hours straight and how they do it, I'll tell you in a while but before that we gonna try and sing these lines first and i hope i'll sing two or three times and i hope you could get the you know the gist on how you know how how to sing these lines again 16 beats <laughs> Is that good? Kalena parat mohi ghari pala chin chin. Kalena parat mohi ghari pala chin chin. So what I did in the first stanza is Eri Ali. This I have put a uh, slash. So that means this for first two words are sung in eight beats. And the remaining four words are sing in rest of the eight beats. So that is where you prolong. Okay. Can you uh, follow it along? Four beats. Okay. Okay. 16 beats. So that's how one line goes. Kalena parat mohi ghari pala chin chin. So karna parat mohi, then it's eight beats and remaining four words again in uh, remaining eight beats. So that makes 16, 16 beats. Okay. So that's the first stanza. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the first stanza is always called as thai. And uh, like we have in any music, we have got one first stanza always keeps on repeating then you have got antra and it's you know uh, there might be uh, three or four antras or three or four you know uh, paragraph uh, what do you call stanzas but there's just one thai you know the lines that keep on repeating that's called as thai in Indian music I'm not sure what you call in best music uh, Alex can you help me here what is sorry what is what called in you western know, the music first, the first line in music uh, you know any song that we sing uh, the line that keeps on repeating I don't think it has a specific word Alicia uh, you no. know 
Yeah. So yeah, in uh, yeah, in yeah, Indian music we call it thai. So the first line that always keeps on repeating, uh, you know. And then we have got antra, which you know, uh, yeah. I don't know for some reason I'm just love me like you do. You know, this this line keeps on repeating, and you have got different paragraphs. So there's this one line. So that's thai for this song, and then all the other paragraphs are just antras, if that makes sense. Okay. So, Sai was that. Do you guys all, all want to sing along with me? The Sai. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. So, okay, okay. I'll move towards the antra then, if that's scary. Jab se piya par de se gavan ki no. Jab se piya par de se gavan ki no. So whenever in a rag, when this first, these first, you know, the first eight beats are repeated thrice, that means the rag is about to end. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, you know, always followed. Uh, but now, how do you know the singers who have been singing it for you know ages and ages, ages prolong it? There comes another you know a complex thing again, yet again. But uh, it really adds to the beauty of a rug, and I'll tell you how it's done. So again, going back to a bit of maths, it was a sixteen beat beat rug, and so until Ari Ali, we had eight beats. Now this is a tan. Tan is a musical composition with swar, and you sing it as it is. Okay, and you add it to any rag, and there are, you can and they are like each of these tans are rag specific. So say for raga savri would have different tans. Uh, another rag would have some other tans. This particular rag, rag Yaman, has these tans, and people do compose it. So these are just compositions, and you sing it along with the rag. And how you do it? I'll just show you. <laughs> So it was Eri Ali until Eri Ali you had eight beats and this first tan it's just eight beat tan. So uh, when you combine eight plus eight it makes it sixteen. So it makes it a full cycle. So that is how you know singers sing. So uh, always rags are always sung along with tans and. Uh, how they make it complicated. I, I know it's quite a lot of uh, for you guys to take in the first workshop. It's just, you know, it's just an introduction. And uh, yeah, obviously like you guys can revisit this and yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm not, you know, expecting you all to, you know, sing this along, but it's just, you know, to give an idea, okay, what a rag is since we have covered so much. So I just show how they complicate it. So, they sing like twice they just try different permutations combinations sing all the tans together sing just two tans together sing just three tans together do the maths it has to be complete you know 16 cycle okay uh, you have to make it 16. So if each of these are 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. So you have to make sure when you sing, say for Eri Ali, Piya Bin Ali Saki, that's 16 beats. Then you have to make sure the tan that you sing along with it is 16 beats. So say for first and second together make it 16 beats. So you can sing these along and it, becomes one, it becomes one full cycle. 
So that is how it goes. Similarly, we have got Tans for Antra. I'm sure we are not left with any more time. Uh, but yeah, it goes the same way as we, you know. <clears throat> So again, I sung 16 beats and then, you know, made a ton of 16 beats combining these two. Or I could have, you know, just sang the first eight beats and sang one ton. And they are like in one you know classical concert you would you know there would be hundreds and two hundreds of tans they would be singing and just showing how much vocal capability the singers have so it's a test about that so that's that's what they show in you know classical concerts and i know it may sound complex now but it all comes down to the basics the sur the notations alankar the practice tests you know and tal which is the rhythm so music is same no matter where you go notations practice and rhythm being persistent and yeah it, it it's as simple and as complex <laughs> as that so yeah that was all for today from my side but if you guys have any questions feel free to ask me right now or you can you know ask me later or however it works Thank you so much, Ashna. Um, it looks like those of us who did find the Zoom link um, had a great session.